doesn't even care. I got my KC highlights on. I'm 20 to 30 yards away from it. The other ones are behind it. Hey bud! You know Brandon? Well, welcome back guys. That was pretty interesting, wasn't it? So last night, just rolling into the ranch, uh, I checked the phone to see where Brandon is and he's in the neighbor's property as usual at that time of the day and he was fairly close to the road so i'm like let's just swing around and see if we can spot him and i have my atn ots 4t with me it's a 640 sensor the one and a half base mac uh extremely handy because now with the 4t the new uh, series uh, in general of the ots you have internal batteries, so no dealing with Kentley batteries or any other lithium batteries anymore. Uh, there's an, I think there's an 18650 inside, just like the Thor 4. You plug this thing in via USB-C and then you're ready to go. So I like that. Much more dependable and reliable than the old OTS HD series. Uh, so yeah, this is my, my companion now, just for things like this, jumping out of the truck real quick looking in the neighbor's field, spotting some hawks, and sure enough, all these hawks were hanging out at those cattle feeders. So uh, we went over there, right to the gate. I was within 20 or 30 yards of those hawks. I turned on the uh, the KC highlights, extremely bright. The truck was running, I just get out, and these hawks just don't care. Uh, I was right uh, to the gate of that uh, the property entrance, and I was able to film, I was able to talk, they didn't care only until i asked them hey, if they bud. knew brandon then uh, yeah then they started acting up and eventually then also um, moving out of that area but it took a long time i mean i've i've gotten i could have taken uh, multiple shots but then again this is uh, not my property so you don't do that 
Um, but yeah, uh, so far the data has just shown that they're spending almost every day over in the neighbor's property. Usually then during the day or early morning they come back to my place and then they, uh, they go hide in the trees. However, they didn't do that last night. Uh, it turns out they are still over at the neighbor's property at a uh, just a location where there's a skinny tree line. It's, there's not a bunch of trees. The last ping I got was about an hour ago. So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to fire up the drone, fly over there, and see if I can if I can spot them. Like this seems to be just an odd place to to hunker down during the day because there's not a whole lot of cover. This is a you know cow pasture right now. There's no cows in there. Nobody messes around in there. So I mean. They don't have anything to, to worry about, I guess. Let's do that. If I can get on them today, uh, I would like to see if we can put Brandon on the ground so we can get our color back uh, and uh, and then we'll do that experiment maybe sometime, sometime again with a different pig and see if they have any other travel patterns. Um, this one seems to be hanging up with this particular group, but I'm sure that I'll see more groups in the near future. I had a bit of rain the last two days, so I have all kinds of water puddles everywhere. It's going to be muddy, um, so we'll see what we're going to do today to get after Brandon. I'm just going to put some corn down. I've got some molasses. That group of pigs, I think that's easily motivated by by a good amount of corn and some some sweet, sweet, sweet molasses. I would I would be surprised if he couldn't lure them in. I'm thinking to do that in my deer blind down there. It's a nice box blind, I have a little heater inside, I can be comfortable, I don't have to sit in a deer, deer tree stand and freeze my fingers off. So I'm liking that plan. There won't be any progress in the, on the uh, shooting range this weekend because it's way too muddy. We also wanted to burn some uh, brush piles. It's also not going to happen because this stuff is too wet now. All right, let's get the drone up in the air and uh, see what we can figure out over there with those hooligans. So I, th I think I think I see that tree line right here, the one right at the extension of that pond point. Right back in here. Somewhere in that, at that end of the tree line. Nothing running yet. We gotta be in here somewhere. So unfortunately I was just a few minutes too late. If you guys look at the screen here, top left, they leave at 9 or 2 a.m. from that group of trees. Uh, I looked at the date and time of the video file the video file was created at 9.25. So I missed them by a mere 20 minutes or so. Uh, that's when they moved out of that spot and I just didn't get a more recent GPS ping back from the tracker. The story continues. Yeah, I'm not getting a new, a new ping. And I feel like, because it's just that stretch over there where I keep losing signal so i have just missing data and it's being shown in the map with the the stroke line and i think that's what's happening so i think they went back from that little uh tree line right here back to my corner of the property and i, I bet they hunkered down down there so I'm, I'm gonna give it some time today see when the next ping is coming in and when it is coming in and it is on our place I'm gonna to try to get after them today. So probably gonna drop some corn back there where the deer feeder is and some molasses 
um, which really is, they should be within 50 yards or so of where they better down, according to the map. Um, yeah. Game plan for today, right there, guys. Let's go get Brandon. Let's go, Brandon. All right. Let's bring the drone back so I don't lose my toy. Go home. That's right. It is impressive how accurate that drone is in that return to home function. It usually lands within only a couple of feet or so of where it started. It's all GPS driven. I hear it, I can't see it. Let's go look. Somewhere up there, guys. Hawk Force One, guys. Hawk Force One. So, a quick update. Those monkeys are already in the back of the KM. The reason is we are about to drive down to the deer blind. I got another ping on my app, and now Brandon is back down on the north side of the property where they usually hang out. Not as close to the deer blind and the feeder as usual, for the, a little further off, which I think is good because that way I can uh, I can get down there right now with the KM, drop a bunch of corn, some molasses, park the KM somewhere at the corner, and then uh, we'll get in the deer blind and see if we can if we can put Brandon to sleep. Get it? Yep, I said that. There you go. Good job, buddy. Just put that the screwdriver back there. Oh, a mouse! A mouse! A mouse! Swing in there. Mouse! Swing in there. Someone. Yeah, there should be two in there, I think. Let's put that corn down. And as I drop in, I scared like four squirrels away. I wish us all season feeders would be squirrel proof. They're actually not. The gap under that varmint guard and the bottom plate, there's a gap like this tall and the squirrels get through it. Boys are, boys are chasing a mouse in the deer blind. I guess they're good for something. <laughs> right, corn and molasses. bag of corn because there's a saying in Germany which is viel bringt viel which means the more the better that's also the uh, apple scented corn I buy at a local grocery store actually which is AGB and definitely has a smell to it and hopefully those pigs uh, will uh, take to it here pretty quick. Worst case, smelly and sticky molasses on top. That should seal the deal hopefully. Everybody is ready for Brandon to show up. 
fuck the, I don't have any, uh, I don't have any signal down here, so. I can't tell if and when they would come in. I guess that's okay because it's landing after all. So the kids were out of patience and I just had to bring them back to the house. It is 4.33, 27 minutes until the feeder goes off. Yesterday that group of pigs came through at 4.40ish or something, according to the GPS track. I think they're within yards of the Vita right now on the corner further back for the south I guess from here yeah I'm just hoping that with all that for one minute should be fine buddy Did you hear that, buddy? For one minute, buddy. Eric, one minute. Can you hear me now? Can you hear me now? <sighs> I guess the signal of these uh <sighs> Buddy I'm hunting, I can't be talking to you the whole time. At this point, he's doing it because he, he thinks it's cool to talk on the radios, which I agree. But the signal of these in a blind made with metal panels is not the best. And I'm hunting, so I'll need to just be quiet now. guys heard that. <laughs> the first time he, he radioed in, he asked for how long he needs to put the burger in the microwave. <laughs> yeah, that's pretty funny. All right. All right, piggies and Brandon, let's do this. Let's go, Brandon. guys haven't heard yet. The uh, e-form system went down actually yesterday as well for a few days. It's going to start back up in the next few days. I would say it's probably still the same form numbers, form 4, but now it's an e-form. Supposedly should speed up the uh, suppressor wait time quite a bit. So, if you guys are looking for a suppressor, this might be a good spot to check. Or if you're in the area, just talk to this guy. So this dude just walked in. points as far as I can tell. He's gonna get spooked in about seven to eight minutes by that feeder going off.
seven, seven pigs. No Brandon yet. I wonder if it's a different group. So before I run out of daylight, because it's only 5.43, I'm going to shoot me man. Yes. I think it's about that time. Passion switch one. I had two pigs lined up and if there wasn't a third pig just in the front which made that one very painful step backwards I would have gotten two in the ground in the first shot but again one pig steps back one step and uh, his butt got into the way. So I, got, I got that one on the ground. There's a small one just to the right of this uh, second shot I took. No Brandon. Brandon's story is going to continue tonight. Alright. I'm going to go get the KM, load these pigs up. So I wouldn't mind throwing one of those in the smoker. And then I'm going to check the GPS data because it's 5, 547. So let's say 545. Let's see what Brandon's track looked like, if he was back there in those woods. And then went running, or if he indeed was in a different spot somewhere. Yeah, looking at this data from that particular night, at that time of those shots, he was basically already in the neighbor's field. You can see here, top left corner, look at the time. Now we're looking at 4.42, at around 5.30ish they start actually moving out of that corner. Now it does coincide with the shots, which happened run somewhere around 5.45, 5.43. Not sure if that truly is triggered by those shots. I mean, that's uh, several hundred yards away from where I took those shots uh, at the feeder. They could have heard them, but then again, it's also suppressed. I would have to measure, but I'm thinking it's somewhere between five to 700 yards away from the feeder where I took those shots. So it could just be coincidence that that's where they crossed that, uh, that fence line and went up to the cattle feeders. Or maybe uh, it was a trigger and they heard those shots uh, faint in the distance and then decided to move on. Well, good morning, everybody. I was just about to get ready to fly the drone again because the pigs have been over in that group of trees again this morning 30 minutes ago I got a ping they were over there and they stayed over there for quite some time I just now got ready to get the drone out everything and um, was about to take off and now have another ping which now tells me they're back on our, our property three minutes ago last ping came in and uh, they're down there at the corner so the question is, what should I do now? Yeah, I think I'll, I'll go after them this afternoon because yesterday at about 5 p.m. they came through the deer feeder uh, where I put down the corn, the molasses the other day. So 5 p.m. yesterday they came through and I have a picture 
of Brandon, one with the color on here, and uh, so I'll try to do that today, I think. In the meantime, I'm gonna get the trailer ready and I'm gonna head out and get some more trees for the ranch. I'm gonna pick up some more live oaks today, uh, 30 gallon, maybe a 45 gallon too. And uh, yeah, we'll get some more, get some more trees because I don't think there's such a thing as having too many oak bearing trees on a property where you try to do some deer hunting. So, all right, we got us some trees loaded up and everything. Six live oaks and two Mexican sycamores. Flip around, there we go. Now just hoping that the tarp stays on there and I don't lose too many leaves, especially from those sycamores sticking out in the back. But I guess there's always a chance to go slower. Just cut back, trees made it. They're nice and tall. Uh, didn't quite realize when we, or when they loaded up to the trailer, how big they are. So those are nice trees. Uh, also picked up a all season feeders, electric protein feeder. I'm thinking we could use that for the goats to supplement the uh, food integrate right now with some goat pellets while we're not out here. So. Uh, it's over there, buddy, behind the fence already. Where the goats are, there you go. So it's a 600 pound uh, stand fill feeder. And I think that's gonna work pretty good. Hopefully the goats can get to it, and if not, then well, it's gonna be a deer protein feeder, which I wanted another one anyways. But I'm gonna get in the tractor, handle these trees, put them into maybe a spot. I don't know, I'm probably not gonna, I'm probably not gonna plant any today, so. I might just put them here next to the barn so they're protected from the wind a little bit. Um, and then, it's almost three o'clock. I wanna be at the, at the deer blind probably at four so that we are all situated and the kids are quiet enough by 4.30 and then hopefully Brandon, the GPS tag pig shows up and we can close out his story today. All right. Let me do that and uh, I'll talk to you in a little bit.